Okay, we'll finish off for exercise 1D with actually kind of putting this all into practice because the proofs are pretty straightforward and these divisibility things were really straightforward. So I can't believe they actually have exam questions and stuff like this, but we're going to be doing some that are a bit more demanding that I think would come towards of an exam paper that we've got here. So it says here that N is a three digit number ABC, that N can be written in this form, where A, B and C are basically digits that we would use. We've got those 10 numbers there. And again, A cannot be equal to zero because it's no longer a three digit number. And it's got these three different properties. First of all, the number is divisible by nine. The sum of the digits is even and N is congruent to three mod 11. We're going to find all the possible values of N showing our working clearly. So our first fact is that N is divisible by nine. Now, if N is divisible by nine, we know something. We know that A plus b plus c means that 9 divides the sum of those things. Now, we don't have to write it in that way, do we? We could say that a plus b plus c is a multiple of 9. Now, a multiple of 9, I can say, is 9 multiplied by k. Now, there's something important about k. We know that k has got to be a member of the integers. And it's important for us to kind of say that k is a member of the integers that we've got there. I'll tell you what, I'm going to keep consistent with the, the book. It doesn't matter which letter you use, but the book uses p, so I'm just going to go with p as well for that one. It doesn't matter if you've got k, though, it's not going to make any difference. And so if it's equal to some multiple of 9, we're going to try and come back to that later on, because that means it could be equal to, well, it can't be negative 9, but it could be zero, can't be 0 either, can it, because of the types of numbers. So it could either sum to 9, it could sum to maybe 18, it could sum to 27, but I don't think it could go any further than those ones. So it looks like, actually, it's either going to be a 9, an 18, or a 27. It can't go any further because these can only be a 9 themselves anyway, so it's either going to be equal to 9, 18, or 27. So the next fact is that the sum of the digits is even. So this means that A plus B plus C is even. Now, if something is even in this particular case, we just mean that it's a multiple of two, right? We could say that C is an even number, but we also know that um, the sum, well, that's, sorry, it's not saying it's an even number. It says the sum of the digits is even, excuse me. So that's why we said it's equal to two Q. We've introduced Q, and so we also need to say here that Q is an integer that we have. And so we know a few different things here. We now know that a plus b plus c is equal to 9, 18, or 27. I'm not going to worry too much about this part that we've got here. So let's go back to this one. We're going to say that here, oh, we'll come back to it in, in just a moment that we have. What else have we got? Oh, no, we, we can combine them. Here's me kind of jumping all around. Now, the sum of the digits are even. We've just said that it's either a 9, 18, or a 27. So I'm going to combine these two things together. We're going to say... As a plus b plus c is equal to 9 or 18 or 27, and a plus b plus c is even, then a plus b plus c equals 18, as 9 and 27 are odd. So out of the list that we had here, this was the one that we wanted to use. And in fact, we're not even going to really have to use this 2Q that we've got. It doesn't really help us because we've now established this very important fact that they're equal to 18. Now we're going to look at this part that the third fact is that N is congruent to 3 mod 11. So N is congruent to 3 mod 11. Now N is 100A plus 10B plus C which is going to be congruent to, well, this part, we know mod 11 is just going to be 1, because 100 is congruent to 1, so that's going to be congruent to A. We also know that B, this 10 that we have, excuse me, 10 is congruent to minus 1, so it becomes minus B, and we have plus C. And we know from before that this is congruent to 3 mod 11. So this means that A minus B plus C is equal to either... It could be equal to a 3 mod 11 or a plus a minus b, excuse me, a minus b plus c could be equal to, well, it could be the 3 plus an 11 because they could be equal to 14 
or a minus, why do I keep writing plus? A minus B plus C could be congruent to, I don't think there's got any point in going up to 25 here because 25, if we added A and B, we could get 18, but we're subtracting something from it so we could never get it up to 25. Now, could we go down below this one? Could I subtract 11 from this to get to minus eight? Well, yeah, I could do because if this was a minus nine and this was a one, one minus nine, is minus eight and C could be zero. So we've got these three different options of things that it could be here. So now we're gonna have a look at these as different pairs of simultaneous equations. We're gonna have a look at this one. Oh, I wanna change color there. We could have a look at this one or we could have a look at this one with the yellow part that we've got because we've used all of the facts. So if A minus B plus C equals three and a plus B plus C equals 18. We can solve these simultaneously. I could do this one, subtract this one. So if I do them subtracting, and I'm gonna do the bottom take away the top, I'll get A minus A cancels, B minus minus B is 2B, and C minus C is zero, 18 minus three is 15. So this gives us B is equal to 7.5, but uh, B, is a member of the integers. Because do you remember at the beginning we said that A, B, and C, they're digits. So this one isn't gonna work at all. This one is gonna not be useful for us. And I'll just highlight that that was our blue one and our yellow one. So now we're gonna do our next one. If A minus B plus C is equal to 14, and A plus B plus C is equal to 18. If I do the same thing of subtracting them, I will get 2B is equal to four, which means that B is equal to two. Great, that's gonna be one that we can use. And our last one that we will check, if A minus B plus C is equal to minus eight, and A plus B plus C is equal to 18, so we've got the one that was yellow from before, and the pink one, and if I do the same process of solving these simultaneous by subtracting them, I get that 2b is equal to 18 minus minus eight, which is 26. So b is equal to 13, but 13 is not a single digit. So this is the one that we are interested in. It's this middle one that we've got here with the green and the yellow. This is the one that I'm gonna say that we've got. So definitely, we know that B is equal to two. Now, if B is equal to two, we can take, say, the yellow equation. So A plus B plus C is equal to 18. You could use the green one, it's gonna give you the same thing. So that's A plus two plus C equals 18. So A plus C has got to be equal to 18 plus minus two is 16. So my last thing is to add in an extra page. So I've got some space. Now we need the combos of A and C that would be uh, equal to 16. So A could be equal to, let's go starting off with A as one of the biggest things from the list. If A is nine, we need to make it add up to 16. So we could get A is equal to nine C would be equal to 16 minus nine, which is seven. Or if A is equal to eight, C could be equal to eight. Or if A was equal to seven, C could be equal to nine. So all of the numbers that we've got are going to be, the first one is A is nine, B is two, and C is seven. Or A is eight, B is two, C is eight or A is seven, B is two, C is nine. So let's see that we've actually answered the question. It says find all the possible values of N. So I'm gonna say here, these are the possible values of N. And we've got three different combos here. And again, you could check all of them. I know that these are, um, this, what do they wanna be a multiple of nine? That's a multiple of nine, that's a multiple of nine, that's a multiple of nine. The sum of the digits is even, and they also are congruent to three mod 11. So you could check all of that if you wanted to as well. So it's quite puzzly, these kinds of things. You really have to kind of be on the ball with this stuff. Um, if you don't want to use this P and Q kind of stuff, that's fine. You can just write A plus B plus C could be, could be equal to nine or 18 or 27. 
We then said that the sum was even, so we knew that a plus b plus c was 18. We then did some modular arithmetic on these kind of bits. We knew that it could either be 3, 14, or minus 8. We knew it couldn't go any higher or any lower than this, just thinking about what a, b, and c could be. Did some simultaneous equations. This was the only one that made sense because b needed to be a number between 0 and 9. And then that allowed us to come up with all the different combos of a and c that had a and c adding up to 16. So we had those three answers that we've got there. I kind of like these ones. I think they're really puzzly and kind of fun. I mean, if we admit that we love maths as much as we do, they are kind of fun. So go and have a go at exercise 1D. That's everything from the AS content for chapter one. A lot of content in this chapter. And I'm also going to do some exam questions in the next video that we've got here.